Hello everyone, I have an incredible show for you today. I'm doing something totally non-traditional that I haven't done before and I want to start moving in a direction of adding a more diverse variety of interviews. I have been so loving the people that I've been having on and Matt, who I have on today, is the founder of Nutrition IQ and Mindcraft Coaching and he's actually a client of mine. And we met through, um, you know, if you've been following me for a while, you all know that I'm a Demartini person. And we met at a Demartini seminar. And we hit it off, started working together. And when we got together for dinner at a recent event, we started having this really cool conversation about how he's in the beginning stages of his business building. And I was like, hey, I want you to come on the show and let's just kind of do a real time breakdown of where you're at in the process in your business so that we can show people what it's like to start to build. And some of those elements that where you get stuck, what's working, what's not. And specifically, we started talking about kind of the breakdown of his story and why he's doing what he's doing. And I just, you know, came up with this idea to go like, hey, let's break it down real time so that listeners can have that experience if that's where they're at in their business building process. So that's what we're going to do today. And if it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Amanda Barrientes. I am the host of this podcast, Max Potential Habits. My company is NFA Coaching, No Fucking Around Coaching. I bring you tips, tools, and inspirational interviews every week and now some case studies to help you optimize your habits so you can thrive in life and business. So with that, let's dive deep, get into it. Welcome on the show, Matt. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. This is great. Awesome. So we t- so tell everyone where you're coming from so they know where you're located. Uh, well, I um, am in California now and my background is really in biotechnology and research and I got a PhD in nutrition and been doing uh, nutrition research. So um, I'd always kind of been fascinated with particularly wellness and uh, nutrition. And uh, so that's something that I've always been very uh, interested in pursuing. In fact, I went to my, get to me, I went to go get my PhD because I was interested in wanting to know more about wellness and but I would get a lot of answers, but instead I got a lot more questions, <laughs> which yep. is really um, something that I really wanted to get into. Do you, sort of did, fell into it. Did you know when you got into, when did you know you wanted to do coaching? I wanted, I knew I wanted to do coaching when um, I was an athletic trainer for some time, for a few years. And I did that actually after I left the biotechnology field voluntarily. I wanted to do something different. And I realized that um, what made me feel fulfilled was watching people do things they didn't think they could do. And in that form, it was really sort of lifting weights. And ironically, I worked with a lot of old people who just want to hit a golf ball 10 or 20 yards further. And the light that kind of went off in their face when they could do that really inspired me. And so I knew, and ironically, that was the most fulfilling part of my life. I remember that was the most creative, most fulfilling part of my life. And it was, didn't, um, and I didn't make a lot of money at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that I wanted to go back to that at some point before and after I went to school. Uh Uh-huh. That's so awesome. So you were helping them train to be able to use their body well for, for golfing, say or something along those lines. Yeah. I, I, this is before I started attending John's uh, John Martini's seminars. I could I knew that their biggest value was being able to golf really well, and they spent yeah. a lot of time on the golf course. And I knew that if I wanted to get clients, if I spoke in a language that was about golf, that's how I could acquire that more and more clients. Yeah, I didn't know it at the time. I just it was intuitive to me to kind of go that direction. So, yeah. That's so cool. Got more and more people. Yeah. I love that. I know you said watching people realize they, they couldn't, they could do what they thought they couldn't do. 
you know, it's like such a gift of coaching, right? Is helping people see those parts of themselves that they didn't believe that they had or that they were too afraid to admit they owned or, you know, all the limited thinking around what we, where we want to go from point A to point B and helping people get unstuck and get there. You know, I, I love that. For me personally, I love that part of coaching. Me too. That's the most rewarding part about it. It's, yeah. I think coaching is, um, it's different when you come to coaching with that mindset. It's, you're not trying to save people. Yeah. You're trying to awaken people. Awesome. And yeah. Awakening is, um, I know in my life, it's given my background and what's happened to me in the past and how I started, how I got here. The awakening was the most profound and um, powerful experience for me and seeing that in other people, it's moving emotionally. I never get tired of it. Yeah. Um, it brings, brings me to tears sometimes to watch people do things they never thought they could do. Totally. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love those moments in coaching where people have those big aha moments and it's like, often it's a simple question, right? It's just knowing when to intuitively ask a simple question to help them break through to the next level. And it's such a, oh, such a powerful joy. I want to ask you, so PhD in nutrition. So what brought you to that route? Like, what was it for you that, that had you thinking like, I really want to dive deep because, and tell me a little more, and I'm going to pretend that I have never heard some of this before, <laughs> just for the listeners. I want them to hear your background. So in it, what drew you to nutrition specifically? I've been in um, biotechnology for 12 years and I'd been working on uh, drugs that were sort of helping people with diabetes and obesity. And I remember going to a conference in Las Vegas, ironically. Um, and I went to a seminar <laughs> that was about, um, it, was just, it was about statistics, but the, uh, the, the subject of that specific seminar was about the placebo effect and how the placebo effect accounts for 30% of these drug effects. And so the first person who was giving the seminar essentially got up there and said, okay, we got a problem. You know, these drugs are not going to really pass if we got 30% of people who are working on this placebo effect. And immediately the first thing that came to my mind is that, wow, you see that as a problem. Okay. Well, there must be something else there. And I knew that in that moment, I was like, I can't be in this industry because that's, mm. I just don't buy into that at all. And I remember they, I voluntarily left after that and uh, got into training. And I think the, the feeling of not really knowing enough about nutrition and it was just such a customized thing. And there were so many questions and you got to do this and you got to do that. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go advance my knowledge and, and do that and go get a PhD. Nice. So I did. I went to go do that. You went all the way, all the way. <laughs> I did. But you know, the irony of that is that you just learn and you know this because you've pursued your PhD yourself. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think there's a, it's a be all end all for information. If anything, no. I think I came out with more questions than I did answers. And that's, yeah, totally. But I'm grateful for that experience. Oh yeah. You know, I think it's interesting because I've had, of course, people ask me like, do I need to go and get those credentials if I want to be a coach or a consultant or, you know, even just an expert in a certain industry. And I go, you know, I think it's always important to look at the motivation for why you're doing it and the inspiration and ask those questions. Like what's the intention behind it? Is it just to learn more? Because of course, like there is a ton of information that you'll learn by pursuing a PhD. But if it's that, that, injected value and fear that you have to have a credential to be taken seriously or that it's going to somehow give you something that you think you already don't already have or can't be self-educated on it. You know, you might want to rethink it because it's so many years of your life thinking in a very specific framework, but if you're there just for the love of learning, awesome. Why not? Right. It's it, like you said, it actually opens the door to more questions all mm -hmm. to me. Like it just, by the end of, of the dissertation journey, I was like, ooh, I wish I could go back and write it all over again. <laughs> because I learned oh, so much writing it that I thought, oh, I know now at the end of it what I didn't know at the beginning of it. And it's just, a, to me, it, 
learning is one of my highest values. And so Mm -hmm. I just constantly go, I want to pursue knowledge everywhere I can, which is even why I love podcasts because I get to sit here and and pick your brain real time and be like, Ooh, tell me everything, you know, tell me about your journey. And I get to learn about you and you get to learn about me. And then we get to share that learning for free with people across the globe. And I think it's just such a powerful way to share information. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So I want to, I want to, I want to hear from your perspective, you know, you're in the beginning stages of building this business. What are some of the stuck points for you when you're thinking about building? um, Are you you equally right now working on Minecraft coaching and nutrition IQ, or are you spending more time in one area than the other at the current moment? I'm probably spending more time with Minecraft right now than I am nutrition IQ, but that's starting to shift more because of um, they're sort of, integrating themselves they're starting to come together and starting to meld together because um, i'm finding what i'm researching about is uh food behavior and eating behavior and nutrition itself and how the mind sort of affects the body's processing of those nutrients and macronutrients Mm, tell us a little bit more What, what what's a big discovery you've made lately that that's valuable Well, I've been pretty fascinated with uh, the gut microbiome, and that's something everybody's sort of the uh, it's sort of a hot topic in nutrition and trying to evaluate how the microbiome affects weight loss and health in general. But my focus with the microbiome is sort of how it affects the mind and how it affects people's behavior. There's a lot of evidence out there that shows a link between um, the gut microbiome, our immunity and depression and uh, anxiety, and other, uh, other mental blocks that kind of occur in our, in our life. Mm-hmm. So my interest actually um, is to see if there is a feedback of the mind on the microbiome itself. So I want to see if you change your mind, if you change your, uh, the connections of the neural network in your mind, if that actually changes the microbiome, if the changes the microbiome, does it change the way that you process food? Mm, This is awesome. And it reminds me like thinking back to when you were talking about the placebo effect and asking what else is here, it's taking current information that we have and looking at it in a different perspective to dig deeper into those questions of like, how does our, how is our microbiome affected by our mind? Exactly. I didn't know it at the time, but my dissertation was a lot about executive function and um, emotional stability and how that changes the eating behaviors. So I looked at the cognitive neuroscience and the brain patterns using functional neuroimaging to see which parts of the brain were affected by people who were exposed to chronic stress. And ironically, the executive centers, the prefrontal cortex are areas that were kind of sent offline during um, exposure to stress or food. So um, they were emotionally driven to do these particular unha- unhealth, what we perceive as unhealthy behaviors. Wow, I didn't know that, but that really was the platform for what I really wanted to do later. It's important to kind of explore that a lot more. So we always think about the one way of these things, but I think that there's another feedback that we're not looking at, and that's sort yeah. of the way that I want to pursue that. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's, to me, that's a really complex and critical way to think about something, existing knowledge that we already have and then taking it and, and twisting it and turning it and seeing it from a different angle so that you can bring something new to the table. And it's really the development of any business, right? Like where are you f- filling in the gaps and where are you showing up with a unique twist on probably – either information that hasn't been integrated or your unique spin on the information you're bringing to the table. So in thinking about that, it's like, I want to ask, you know, when, when, 
I mean, I could go dig. I, I feel like I want to dig really deep in the nutrition part, but then I'm also going, okay, wait, I want to bring some, I want to bring people the business development part and I'll have you back on another time to ask you the nutrition <laughs> question <laughs> sure. um, for business challenges as you're building this business. So I, I've already heard quite a bit to pick out in terms of thinking about how you're going to establish your story. So just a little bit of background for everyone listening. You know, I coach people on how to build their business successfully whatever's limiting them it could be their their limited perspective their mindset their money blocks could be relationship challenges confidence maybe it's that they don't know exactly what they want to do but they know that they want to use business as a wealth building vehicle we sit down and we go through you know coaching processes that and methods and that i apply to help you get unstuck and get where you want to go to create a thriving business where you get to make as much money as you want doing exactly what you love to do. So in that, a huge part of that process is getting clarity around what it is that you're doing in your business. And one of those aspects is your story. So why you came to do what you're doing and the process of that and how you share it with other people is what really sets you apart by being uniquely you. And you've got, Matt, it's cool because you've got like a really unique business that, and partly I think because you've got this high, you know, graduate level education and a lot of years in the industry of biotech and, and nutrition. So you've got like this very expert information that you're bridging the gap between mind body connection and you have, you know, the, the, the research behind it. And then you also have this piece where you get to bring that to the mainstream people to help you know, and taking it out of the, the, um, the, what's the term for college? The, uh, academic, you mean. yeah, for academic, but the, uh, oh, it's so weird. My favorite book is the glass castle and I can't stop thinking the glass castle, but it's not the glass <laughs> castle. It's the, you know, the, the confinements of academia where we write these journal articles and barely anyone reads them. Right. So right. as a coach, one of the things that, reasons why I wanted to become a coach instead of staying in the academic arena was because I get to have a much broader reach and I get to, to mainstream information so that more people, it's accessible to more people, right? So yes. what you're doing is like bringing together this mind-body connection in a very powerful way. And I want, you, I want to break down your story that you're going to share with people as to why you've decided to do this process. It, or, and why you've decided to create Minecraft and Nutrition IQ. So let's go there. Does that sound, is that, you, that you willing? Great. You ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I want, I'm going to take you through this process. And for anyone listening, if you have a pen and paper, you might be driving, listening, so you might not be able to do it. Come back later. Um, this is a four step process. So in building your business, you're coming up with a crafting of your story. And the reason your story matters is because it's a call to other people to resonate with you, to connect with you on that business level, to get to know you better, to help them understand why they would want to work with you because they see you as a human being, right? So you've noticed when people are trying to sell you something, it feels salesy if you have no connection or resonance with them. Whereas when they share a story with you, you're like, oh, like you don't even notice what's going on behind the scenes because you are listening to their story, hearing their journey and relating to them and going like, I can have that too. And so parts, these, there, it's a four step, uh, four, there's four parts to crafting your story. So I'll give you the outline and then we're going to break it down by walking through this with Matt. So number one, there's an awakening, right? You have this moment of awakening where you're like, you have a, a revelation or a realization that something that you're doing or wanting to do is not working, right? You're like, there's this awakening and almost this, this part where you you see yourself differently or you see the world differently and you wake up to it like you were saying Matt I love that you said it's not saving people but it's helping people awaken so like mm -hmm. the your own story starts with awakening right then you have what I call the breakdown pit <laughs> so it's like you have this moment where you kind of break down and you go whoa life is not as I knew it business is not as I knew it where I wanted to go is different than I thought it was going to be potentially and it's this moment of kind of crisis breakdown where you're at the bottom and you're realizing that you want something different, something new. 
Then there's this moment of commitment, right? This is the moment where you're ready to do whatever it takes to shift in a new direction. And you have the belief because you're so committed. It's your why moment where you go, I know exactly why I want to move in this direction. And then the fourth step is the growth journey. This is where you actually do the work and you can you you take action on your commitment and you have this growth journey and this transformational process where you become a different person where you build a new business where you overcome relationship challenges where you o overhaul reset your money habits and go from food stamps to six figures those are the the moments where you're putting all of this into action and then so that's the part of the story you're sharing with the world where they get to understand why they would want to work with you or why they would want to access your products or services and where they get to see you as this human being who has overcome these challenges yourself. And then this next part isn't part of the story development, but it's the part of where you're stepping into your identity as a, that new person, like whether it's as a coach or a consultant or a real estate investor or whatever it is, you start to teach what you've learned. And so let's break this down. So for you, what would you say in building Minecraft and Nutrition IQ, where, where's your awakening point? And, and even from the story you've already told us, I feel like I can pick up these moments in, in what you went through. But what would you say was an awakening point for you to go, I got to start this business. I want to get into, and I know you didn't know the names of the business at first because that's part of the process, but where did you have this awakening at like, oh, I'm not going to be a professor anymore. Or I'm not going to be a researcher anymore in the same way. And I want to start to develop my own business. What was it, what you... it was that moment in Las Vegas for sure. I'll never forget that. That was, um, it sticks out in my mind a lot because I could remember seeing a lot of people in the room saying, how are we going to figure this out? And I knew better. I don't know how I knew better, but I intuitively knew this is not, this is not the, my journey anymore i'm not going to be that guy up there telling me like how are we going to fix people with the drug and are we going to you know, fix a problem that i didn't see as a problem but i saw as an opportunity that's where i immediately felt like this is not what i want to do this is not how i want to help humanity awesome and that was a triggering point for me Tr very much a triggering point for me Okay. Yeah. I was thinking that when you said that, I was like, Ooh, cool. That's your awakening point. Cause you see, you even use the word, like, I can't be in this industry anymore. I yeah. like, I just, you had this awakening moment where you're like, okay, something is going to shift now because I can't do this trajectory anymore for whatever reasons, you know, it's going to be different for everybody. But for you, you were like, I'm going a new route. Okay. So when you yeah. think about a, a breakdown pit. So, so, and when I, I want to share with everyone, when you're writing this stuff down for yourself, start to think about your process and write it down and go, okay, so the awakening moment for, for Matt was in Vegas. He was at a biotech conference and he was like, Oh my God, I don't want to be on this journey anymore. I don't want to be the guy who pushes pharmaceuticals. That, that's not my path anymore, right? So write this down and start to work through your process, through your story, because when you're sharing it with other people, you're going to call back on this and craft it to where you're going to be able to tell a one minute story, a five minute story, or maybe a 30 minute. Like let's say you're doing a, a intensive workshop, you might give a 30 minute background story of how you got into what you're doing. Whereas when you're in the elevator with someone, you know, the ele famous elevator pitch, you might give a much shorter story, right? So, but I want you to have all the elements so that you know how to use this in your building of your business. So, okay. So awakening, we got the moment for you. What about the breakdown? And it, it might not, for some people, it's going to feel really pit like and like, Oh God, when we have this huge challenge of rethinking the way we've been doing things or even a huge career transition or maybe a relationship breakdown, maybe a body breakdown, maybe a financial breakdown, you feel like you're in that breakdown pit moment where you're like, Oh wow, everything isn't the way that I knew it before. So could you identify that moment for you? Does that resonate? Yeah, I, well, I pretty much had all of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> you know, it was, it was really everything happened all at once. I remember, um, you know, I'm a, as you know, I'm a single parent. And uh, I had, um, I remember I had, I was trying to make some investments 
and um, somebody that I should, somebody has ended up taking a lot of my savings and a lot of my money. And um, it was shortly after that, I actually got, um, I was released from my job because the funding had sort of dried up. And uh, I remember when they told me that, um, it's interesting you mentioned this because I remember wanting to, I was put my hand in my, or I put my face in my hands and I remember sort of crying, but I couldn't tell whether I was really sad or was really happy. And I remember <laughs> having both. It was really both. Yeah. Because I remember thinking like, that sucks, but oh my God, I'm so happy that I get to do something because this is, this is the opportunity I really, really wanted. Yeah. But it was difficult to get over the feeling of like a complete collapse because I remember, you know, I just had my money stolen and, you know, I had all these loans to pay off and I had not, you know, and I just got laid off and it's, there were a lot of other feelings going on to that. But I remember having that thought also like, this is opportunity. Let's uh-huh. go do it. Go for it. Yeah. Wow. I love that. The simultaneous like fear and relief. Yeah. That's interesting. I know John D. Martini talks about that, having a yeah. thought and the anti thought. But I and I remember specifically having that in there because I thought, I don't really want to work for you anyways. Yeah. I know what you're yeah. Doing. <laughs> well, and it's so cool because at the at at the the moment of every breakdown is the moment of opportunity, right? Like you go, there's, it's the opportunity for you to step into a new version of yourself. It's the opportunity for you to see a new version of yourself or to see a new opportunity. So it's like those perceived losses are an openness for new gains. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay. So for you, it's like in your storytelling, you're going, okay, my awakening point, I had this revelation that I'm not on the pharmaceutical path anymore. I want to study nutrition. And as I'm doing that, I lose my job. I, I, I have this money stolen. I'm like, oh crap. And what's the moment, you know, so you're going like, what now? And what was the belief, the commitment part? So number three, the commitment part and your why and that came in for you to go like, I'm ready to do something new. Tell us about that part of your story. I remember sitting on the couch and, um, you know, I, I'd been listening to a lot of John's stuff and I thought that that's, it was the opportunity that I actually really wanted was to have time. And I remember that I'd had enough money to sort of be okay and pay the mortgage and um, to, to be sufficient for, for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And um, immediately I thought that's what I wanted to do was to, I want to start coaching. Cause I remember the most fulfilling part of my life was being a trainer, being a coach. Yeah. And I want to feel, I wanted that feeling again. Um, I know I'm really excited about nutrition and coaching and the mind body connection. And that's the direction that I wanted to go. So the first thing I did was figure out how I could, how long I could sustain, sustain, excuse me, sustain myself financially so I could keep, keep going and put the work into this right away. Yeah. I found roommates to, um, you know, take up the rest of the rooms in my house and yeah. the mortgage. And that was, um, I figured out ways to make it work for me financially so I could spend a lot of energy yeah. building a business and doing this. And that was, that was critical because yeah. I knew what I wanted to do. And I asked that question, how can I do that? I didn't think it's never going to happen. I really put that mantra in there. How can I do it? How can I do it? Yeah. And you know, that was really, it still is, truthfully, the, the most creative experiences in my life. Yeah. You know, it was really liberating. 
on its side. Um, I love this. Okay, so I want to highlight for people listening, when you know your why, the hows will take care of themselves. So when you actually commit and decide to do something, you're cutting off other options and you are driven to ask those how can I questions. So big challenges come your way and instead of folding and, and laying down and crying, you go, okay, how can I make this happen? Because I'm so committed, I'm so clear, I'm so dedicated to fulfilling my mission and my vision that it's okay. Those obstacles are on the way instead of in the way and you're like, yes, yes, yes. I'm willing to have roommates even though I haven't had roommates in a long time. I'm willing to restructure all my finances. I'm really willing to stop doing certain things I've done in the past in my lifestyle to dedicate time and money to my business, right? So it's this really powerful but to me, a commitment is one of my favorite words and it's one of my favorite journeys because when you really decide and commit to something, then you can move mountains. I mean, like unforeseen, you know, and I know I talked about this in a, a podcast recently when I was sharing, you know, do you know how powerful you are? And part of that power comes from commitment right? It's that ability to decide. And I have had so many times where I'm like falling down, terrified, but I'm like, I am still in the game. You know, I've had tons of failures in building my business, you know, perceived failures. I've had tons of challenges. It's not easy building a business. If you're in this for ease, you're in the wrong place. Building a business is not about ease. It's about doing what you were put on this earth to do. It's about being committed to do it. It's about learning and growing and loving failure and loving challenges and going like, yes, I am committed, committed, committed. And opportunities will come your way. And I promise you, if you stay in the game, so much can happen in a year even more can happen in two and think about 10 years from now where you will be if you take action and commit to your business today so in this part of the story I love that you highlighted that so beautifully you know you were like I restructured I did what I needed to do with my budget I created a compelling why because you had the belief and you were ready to transform so now on this number four on the growth journey would you say that's this is kind of from my perspective where you're at in the story in your story you're just stepping into speaking engagements and turning your business into a profitable um you know like money making coaching practice yes. so mm -hmm. in the journey, growth journey what's that looking like for you what what's that part of your story well, it's interesting. And once I committed to, um, doing this and finding the resources, as you just pointed out, um, things just started happening. Things, opportunities showed themselves to me. Um, I met someone who got me in contact with somebody who get me in contact with somebody else. And, um, next thing you know, I'm going to Portugal and Spain and Brazil to do talks to students at universities. And um, I, it happened all so fast. And it was really kind of overwhelming. <laughs> wow, well, it's amazing how fast things can happen if you just commit to, commit to a process. Yeah, totally. Uh, and I did. Um, and so that's, that's been really an exciting um, exciting to be able to deliver a message that is extremely meaningful to me and seeing it meaningful to a lot of other people because um, that's what I why I do it I don't do it for because that's something that I want to say and um, it's a message I believe that people need to hear and want to hear that's yeah why I do what I do yeah I love this okay so what now, if, if you needed to package this story into two minutes, let's say, how less than two minutes. So you're talking about the awakening in Las Vegas and realizing that you couldn't do that anymore. The breakdown where you lost your job and you're scared and you have that moment of relief and there's the overcoming. And then you made a commitment to decide to build your business. And now you're on this growth journey and that's why you're coaching. And that's why you're sharing this with other people. Do you want to practice and 
and share it with us and to, you know, try it. I know it's on the fly, so don't worry if it's polished, but this is what I want all of you listening to start practicing doing, because this is a very, very powerful tool in helping people connect with you, promoting yourself so that you can build your business. I don't care what business it is. Stories are powerful. At you, if you all are sitting there thinking about someone who's impacted your life, I promise you that they shared their story with you. Probably, right? It's why we love certain movies because it's character development. It's why we go to certain, you know, we we buy into certain brand identities because we know their story. So this is a, I'm teaching you all of this today. Thank you so much, Matt, for being willing to come on and just do this real time and see what happens. <laughs> um, because it's, I think it's a really, really powerful part of building your business. And I wanted to share with all of you the process that it takes to kind of break it down and then build it back up you know, into this, into this kind of structured format. So do you want to practice? Absolutely. Okay. Go for sure. it. However it works for you. <laughs> well, I think that like pretend we'll do role play. Okay. So like pretend I just okay. met you on the, in the elevator and I'm like, Hey Matt, you, you know, like I heard a little bit about your business. What, tell me about it. How did you get into that? Oh, uh, well, I got into it <laughs> essentially through um, life throwing me a lot of curveballs. I think sometimes that's what needs to happen for us to follow um, our path, the things that we want to go want to go for. Uh, I think it takes perspective. I think it takes um, knowing that there's an opportunity there, and that's. One of the key key things too, I think, for anybody who wants to get into it, something that they want to get into, or changing their path or changing their mindset is changing their changing their perspective about things. Um, so then, okay, so is, and then in that, get really specific, like like, and and of course, you're not going to use the words awakening, breakdown, pit, commitment, journey, but I want you to kind of go through, like, walk someone through that process and paint the story. So essentially tell the story. Yeah. Is yeah. That, okay. Yeah. And that, and, and in a, in a way where you're sharing with them a quick glimpse in your crafting of your story, why you're doing what you're doing so that they can connect with you and, and get inspired to want to work with you. Right. Or maybe tell you of a new opportunity for speaking or something like that. So in that moment, you're like, you're connecting with them on that level of building rapport through crafting your story that you've already prepackaged basically, right? Like you're going to say it authentically in the moment, but you, I want people to practice this because then it just comes off the cuff really easily. Like when people ask me about why I coach, you know, I go like, holy moly, because I stepped into coaching. So awakening, right? Here's awakening for me. I go, I was laying on the, and it's and it, for me, a lot of it starts with the breakdown moment, like awakening and breakdown. So awakening was me going like, my life sucks. Holy crap. I got to do something different. Like I am, I'm laying on the floor. So when someone asked me, I go, well, one night I was laying on the floor crying because I left my 15 year marriage, having an affair. My new relationship was falling apart and I had no idea where I was going to live or, or like how to feed my kids. And I was terrified. And I, you know, and I can give a longer story with more details, but if I have two minutes, I'll go, you know, and then I'm sitting there going like, oh shit, I'm the common denominator in this life story that I've created. And I decided in that moment, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to transform into a different person who can have a fulfilling relationship and shift my money reality because I'm super sick and tired of being stuck. So that's the pit, right? Then I go into like the, the commitment was I decided I was willing to do whatever it takes to transform into a different person and then my growth journey, right? And then, so now I share my growth journey. So I started going to these, I started listening to podcasts because they were free and I had no money. And then I started listening to YouTube and then it started to implement what I was learning and it gave me money to go to high end coaching and it started to work and people started asking me what I was doing. And now I have an incredible business helping people transform their lives and businesses. That's amazing. So there's the business card. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I mean, I've said it so many times and it is so from my heart because it's my story. Like that is why I do what I do. So I want to help you develop that for you and all of you listening. I want you to start thinking, how do you craft your story into a message that connects with people's hearts? that lands with them knowing why you're inspired to do what you do so that then they get to be your greatest resource for being a client themselves. Or maybe it's that they're like, Ooh, you need to talk at this university. Or maybe it's they're like, Ooh, you need to come into this real estate agent's office and do a workshop. Whatever it is that you're selling or packaging, your story really matters. So there's an example of how my story unfolded over time and how, or how I crafted my story through mm. my unfolding over time. So, so, so do you, do you want to try to practice just like that kind of a story? Let's do a practice run. Go for it. Let's do it. Yeah. This is my narrative. <laughs> uh, well, I've been working in biotech and realized that um, I really wanted to work with people because pharmaceuticals and uh, just were not really a, a uh, avenue for really helping people achieve a wellness that really I knew that they could do on their own without a drug. So I had actually went to grad school to sort of really get more knowledge about this and having uh, spent some time in research, realized that there was a lot more to the mind body connection. And um, when I got laid off and uh, I realized that there was something that I wanted to do was work more with individuals to help them understand and comprehend the power that they have to be able to augment their health and be healthy and make choices um, was something that I'm really good at and something that I love doing. And so I made a decision um, that that was the avenue that I was going to pursue and I did everything that it took to be able to sustain myself and be able to build that practice because I believe in it wholeheartedly and I want them to believe in that process too awesome there you go see now you're planting the seeds of your story I love that that was that was so you can you feel the way that you get to it's like bringing your inspiration into people through your story of how why you're inspired right it's like, it's, it's such a powerful gift that you get to bring. It's kind of like, I like, I, I like people to visualize this as like, this is my gift to you, me vulnerably and openly sharing my process to get here with you so that we can connect on that level. The moment I appreciated the journey, the moment that I appreciated that um, awakening and having been in the pit, that part of it, recognizing that that was transformative yeah that it wasn't and not placing judgment on it makes yeah. it easier to incorporate into the story totally you know when i'm grateful for that part of being laid off and having money stolen from me and yeah you know it's it's made it makes me want to make that put that into the story like i'm totally. not ashamed of anything that's ever happened because yeah i couldn't be here without those experiences yeah. And you know what it does is it gives other people the permission to share their shit, right? Like we all have all this shame yeah. about our downfalls when really every single person has downfalls, but we tend to want to hide it and, yeah. and tuck it away and pretend like we're all perfect and great and everything's <laughs> awesome. Right. And that's baloney. Yeah. And I, I will say, you know, for everyone listening, I, one of the things when I run workshops, probably the number one version of feedback I get is thank you for being willing to be vulnerable and share your authentic story. Mm -hmm. You know, cause I've had all kinds of stuff. Most people don't like sit out there and broadcast that they had an affair, right? Like people are way too ashamed to do that. And for me, it opens the door for other people to go like, wow, Amanda is willing to share her story. So I can share my story with her. You know, right. and so it's a really powerful gift that you're giving people. I love that you said that to not judge yourself, but to see it as like part of your journey, part of your story, share it like a story. And it's, it's, it is by far one of the most powerful tools to connect with people and build your business. So, you know, that's, 
my job here on this podcast is to help you empower yourselves to become the most incredible version of yourselves, the most authentic version so that you can build a business doing what you love. And so I want to say thank you so much, Matt, because it's vulnerable to come on and kind of like, you know, but for everyone listening before we, um, got on the show, we had a pre-show chat and I was like, Hey, I've never done anything like this before on a podcast and I don't know what will come, but let's, we'll just wing it. And he was like, I'm game. So thank you. It takes, you know, it takes courage and vulnerability to just show up and be like, Oh, let's see what happens. (laughs) (laughs) Thank thank you. you. It's it's a wonderful experience. (laughs) Good, good, good. (laughs) All right. So for people to find you, tell them your website so they can check you out. And, and everyone, uh, Matt's in the beginning stages and he is looking for places to share his his work and right like you're in, you do um, I know you do speaking yes so check him out and if you think that he's someone that you want to connect with which I know you will check out his website your emails on there and what is the best place for them to, to reach you and find you? my website is uh, mindcraftcoach.com and uh, it's really, um, I, I want to work with, with everyone, of course, but I think, um, with kids and teenagers also, uh, I think the younger, what I realize is the younger you realize the things that you really want to do, the younger that you get inspired to, uh, do things with your life and understand your values and where you want to go. You can't wait for the rest of your life to begin. Yeah. I know it's happened to me and often I think, man, I wish I had this kind of inspiration <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I know that's everybody. your, your real joy is to work with younger kids and get them kind of fired up for life at an earlier age. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So, and, and, uh, I will post all of this in the show notes so you'll be able to find his link there. And then I know you also have nutrition IQ.net. Is that up and running yet? Nutrition IQ is, uh, we're just still getting that up and going, Um, but that's going to be up and going pretty fast and we're going to be posting videos and it's really kind of a quantitative self kind of, um, it's going to be putting information about nutrition, but sort of our take on it on a balanced way of it, because I know a lot of sites want to polarize everything like this is good, this is bad. And the truth is it's kind of both. So that's really sort of a balanced perspective on nutrition, how to sort of integrate your mind with your food and Ooh, I can't putting wait. all that together. Yeah, that's really cool. That's going to be amazing. What would you say are your top three max potential habits, Matt? I think the first one is to really trust yourself and know, uh, not be afraid to be yourself. Um, trust your judgment. That's the really, really, really important. Uh, and don't give in to fear. Trust yourself and go for it. I think the other, another one is to really see opportunity no matter where you are and what's happening and to um, act on that. See opportunity, act on it. Don't be lazy about it. Be inspired, go for it. There's nothing more fulfilling in your life than seeing opportunity and going after what you really, really want. And then momentum, I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest things for me is I think to keep things going, keep the momentum going, because I think if you go and then stop, and you go and stop, and you go and stop, um, it's almost like going to the gym, you know, <laughs> you go to the gym, you're like, woo, I feel great. Then you stop going and you're like, eh, I can't do it anymore. And it's very analogous to a lot of things, especially when you're building a business or when you want to go someplace or, you know, be more successful, you have to keep going. You have to be build that momentum. So it's a lot like going to the gym, keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Yeah. Even if it's painful, you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I talk a lot about uh, taking strategic action daily, you know, and it's like that thing of momentum. It's like, yes, I think the word strategy in there matters, but there also is just something to be said for showing up daily for the game, you know, no matter what over time, if you look at a year, if you take action every day, I mean, those small steps compound, 
dramatically and beautifully and massively to where you can create so much. So that momentum piece is so important. Those are awesome. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this was helpful for all of you listening. I would love it if you got something out of this. Please, please, please leave comments and leave a review. Subscribe to the channel. Written reviews are amazing on iTunes and help me out in growing and reaching more people. So, if, you know, I, I have an incredible assistant who puts stuff together for me, but other, and it's all self-funded, right? So you're the value exchange here that would be amazing is if you could just leave me a review and shout give me a shout out on social media channels and hashtag nfa coaching and that helps me grow and expand and reach my goal of impacting five million people through nfa coaching and i will be back next week i hope you all have an incredible week where you thrive and feel alive